me and Darren up here today. Lou couldn't make it this morning. He had uh, something else he had to do, but he'll be up here a little later. Going to use the power screen today, make it a little bit easier on us. Same floor mix we always use, 3500 fiber, low air with a water reducer. I treat people how you know, I want to be treated. You do? Yeah. You heard that saying, treat people how you want to be treated? Watch out! I guess we're ready. Yeah. You want a little push or you want to pull your ass off? Well, well, we want you to hit it. We'll let you decide. Now the reason our floors aren't specced with rebar or wires is because they don't need it. These floors are locked in by the concrete walls. Now the concrete cracks because it either shrinks, it settles, it heaves, or it's put under tension and it cracks. Well here, there's not going to be any weight on the concrete floor. All the weight will sit on the concrete walls. They'll have floor trusses that will span from one wall to the other. So there's no posts in here, there's no lolly columns in here. It's just the concrete floor, so no weight's going to sit on the floor. When the subgrade was filled in and, and compacted, it was filled in in layers, six to eight inch layers, compacted really hard. So the, the floor is not gonna settle at all and it's not gonna heave because it's inside a basement and it's heated. So really what we gotta do is just control the shrinkage cracks. And we do that by sawing joints in all our floors. So after we get done power trial on this today, we'll saw cut enough joints in this to where we feel it'll control any of the shrinkage cracking. And that's the major reason we don't use rebar wire in these floors. Now a lot of you that watch also say my concrete's way too wet. You know, your soup's on, that stuff's so wet it's not gonna, it's gonna crack all up. Well that's what the water reducer does. We don't add water to get it like that. We use a water reducer. It's a chemical they add at the plant when they batch the concrete and it allows the concrete to get really loose like that so it'll flow really good and just make our job really easy. A little bit over here. I wonder what I do with my mag. A little bit please. My mag. I thought I brought my mag down. Must have left it up there on the truck. So we're pouring on top of two inches of styrofoam and that's just because it's code in the state of Maine, something to do with, you know, making these houses super insulated. Um, they'll also have to put two inches of styrofoam up the walls either on the inside or the outside when they end up building it. And then there's a six mil vapor barrier underneath the styrofoam to help with moisture coming up through. You know what we forgot today? What? You know what we forgot? <laughs> a ladder. Yeah, well, that way. You're gonna have to carry us out with a shoot. Yeah. You want that left unlocked? Uh, yeah, you can give us a shot, yeah. Okay, here we go. So depending on how much of that water reducer you ask for, you, I mean this stuff, this is probably an eight slump right here. This stuff is moving around. It's, it's. I wouldn't say it's self-leveling, but it, it moves around. It flows really good. You can see when it hits the ground, it just spreads right out. It's a little rocky today though. We've been having to deal with a little bit of inconsistencies in the mix lately. But with just two of us, I mean Darren and I have poured floors like this for years together, just the two of us. And there's just no way we're pouring stiffer concrete and be able to do 150 to 200 of these floors a year without just getting worn right out. You get that pulled down there.
Just a little bit right there, please. Hello? Yeah, half inch. But what I'm doing now is I got the grade stick in my hand. I got a self-leveling uh, ro rotary laser set on top of the wall. And we're matching this front wall right here, the one that Darren just magged to a little bit. That's the height of the floor. So I'm just shooting a pad in the middle, the same height as that wall. And then we can use this pad to strike off with. So I got to use the laser to make sure I get it at the right height. I don't want it high. I don't want it low. I want it right perfectly level with that. And then we'll just grab the long screed or the rod and strike it off from that. Then we can use that vibrating screed to get this floor screeded. Now, Darren and I, like we like to pour out quite a bit of mud when we're just pouring by ourselves. You know, we know how much time we got to work with it. We know how fast we got to get it down before it starts to set up at all. So this is, this is pretty basic for us, getting quite a bit dumped out before we get some screeded here. Habit. Habit. So as I screen this down, you're going to be able to watch me do this. You're going to be able to keep an eye on Darren. It's his job to keep it at the right level. It's my job just to go slow and steady and watch my right end and my left end make sure they're touching my pads by leaving a little line. So let me know how I do here. Watch me and see how I do. I had my hand 
So for two guys, let me know what you think. I mean, that's a pretty easy way to screed, ain't it? That's why you pour a slump like that, guys, with a water reducer. You don't have to kill yourself. The guy screeding's not working too hard. The guy raking is working hard, but he's not killing himself pushing and pulling that back and forth. So, you know, let me know what you think. You, do you want to try a screed like that? That first two bays down. No, I have a lot of effort on the two of us. Hope the rest goes the same way. Pull float nice and easy. Tight butter on top. What do you want? Are you on hold? Yes. Did you give it a drink? I gave it a drink. Five gallons. Okay. Now, using that that vibratory screed makes the bowl floating really easy. And having you know six, seven, eight inch slump, you can see it's just down and back once. It closes up really nice and smooth. And that's how we leave it until we get ready to power trial it. Now we really like using that tremmy back there with a the boot off the chute when we pour over an eight foot wall. That makes pouring the concrete really easy too for us. Now in our crew, whenever we use a boot or a tremmy like this, or even pump concrete, Darren's usually one that grabs either the pump hose or the boot like this, and he he's the one that directs that around and gets the concrete to where we need it. And then either me or Luke, you know, will will be off doing our thing. One of us is usually following right behind him with a with a come along like I got right now, kind of knocking the concrete down, getting it level. And then when the, when there is three of us, usually there's three of us on the job. The other guy can be, you know, magging the edges, getting the the, pad, the grade pad shot, or just bull floating or doing something else. So I don't know if you guys have a, someone like that on your crew that just kind of does the one thing, you know, all the time. But Darren's usually the one that does this. He doesn't mind it. He just does a good job. It is probably the messier part of the job. Sometimes concrete will flow out over the top of that thing. You might get a little bit dirty, but... What do you think that concrete looks like right there as I'm kind of moving it around? Now they're putting a bathroom down here. That's why they got this plumbing. This is probably uh, an opening for like a shower drain or something. So they'll eventually plumb up a bathroom and finish the basement off is what we're assuming. We don't usually get to know a lot of the details about what people are doing down here. We're just, we're hired to come in for the day and pour and finish on a lot of these jobs. So what we're doing right here is Darren's trying to get the concrete all poured out up at right, right up against that back wall all the way to your left there where the foundation kind of goes into it towards the truck is driving right now. There's a little 8x8 eight eight section right in there. We want to get all that concrete poured right out and then you know I can come I can come behind him and start magging the edges like this get the edges all magged up before we screed it because we know it's only going to take a couple minutes to get this part of the floor screeded down. So we don't want to just pour out one little piece, mag the edges, screed it, 
pour out another little piece, mag the edge of screed it. We want to get it all poured out, and then it just makes the screeding part a little bit faster for us. Now, like I said, the concrete was a little rocky today. We call it kind of bony. Concrete's a little bony. It's like they added more rocks than what they needed. So sometimes you got to take your mag, just kind of vibrate the surface a little bit, get them kind of settled a little bit, and kind of work up the paste, get and cream in order to get your edges mag really, really smooth. And then it's kind of like back and forth for me. You know, I want to get a little bit of edge mag. I'll make sure I'm breaking down with this kind of breaking down, and we call it tuning in the concrete. I'm trying to tune it right into the the blue chalk line we got snapped at floor grade. I don't want to get it low. If anything, I want it just a tiny bit high. Um, ideally, it's you want it perfect, but you never get it perfect. So we're trying to get it as close as we can to grade as possible, and then you know we come back here and get our edges all magged get around these pipes. If I need to shoot another pad here, I'll shoot another pad because the board on the screed is only 12 feet, so I can't be, you know, I, I, we can't be further away from the wall than 12 feet without having a pad, otherwise the screed won't have anything to go by. So let's see what I end up doing right here, if I end up making another pad or not. this edge a little bit there. Please. Hold on, I'm coming your way. Uh, Come on. Well, we put you right to work, won't we? Yeah, I got a problem. 
I'm not the uh, ball ought to be coming to it. Is that land on the video? Huh. You having a tough time with that? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Jeez, you're going to bend it. Let me, let me do it like don't get mad. I'm not getting mad, but it ain't coming apart, buddy. Let me see. You did it! You acquired a new skill today. Uh, I knew you and Paul had something going on. Oh, Time you guys checking Tyler out. No, 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 I didn't really talk about it. I know he's got like a, a beach day today. I think that's from like 11 to 1. Probably right after that. I know, I gotta get Megan and Lauren Let's and look. Allison. <laughs> Need a little shot, Brian. We made it, bud. We made it. Just the two of us. Been, yeah. to get, been together 38 years, Darren and I. Yeah. Same time, Lou. <laughs> Eat good and stiff over here. Hey. Dab your way out. Oh, we're gonna need to come along full in there, aren't you? So this square here is about 28 by 28. And then that's what, two, four, six, eight by, eight by eight right there. So they'll just deck this over, build up from here. And then, uh, you know, they could finish the basement off if they want to. Oh yeah, he had to put up with Brian's. Should have seen him trying to get the bull boat handle off. He was having a fit. Ask him about it when he gets down. All right, guys. So that's how two guys pour. Uh, Walk out basement floor, 10 and a half yards, four inches thick, fiber mesh, water reducer. I don't know what that took us, 30, 40 minutes maybe to do that, but it wasn't too bad, two guys. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one.